Auch dieses Jahr wieder traf sich die Rohstoffbranche auf der größten Messe dieser Art, der PDAC 2017 in Toronto. Auch Goldinvest.de war vor Ort und konnte zahlreiche interessante Gespräche führen. Unter anderem mit Gem International Resources, einem sehr interessanten Diamant Explorer. Das ist das Ende der PDAC 2017, aber zum Abschluss auf dem Weg zum Flughafen quasi haben wir noch ein sehr interessantes Gespräch arrangieren können. Wir sind hier im Büro von Lee Barker, er ist der Chief Consultant in geologischen Fragen für Gem International. Ein sehr interessantes Diamantenunternehmen, die eine sehr, sehr große und aussichtsreiche äh, Lizenz in Angola untersuchen werden. Äh, wir wollen jetzt mal nachfragen, was die Pläne sind und uns das Potenzial erläutern lassen. Lee, welcome. Um, thank you for taking the time. Well, can you first give us a short uh, idea of what you've been uh, doing in the field of diamonds? Um, really what your biggest uh, successes were? Well, I've been involved in diamond exploration and a number of discoveries since 1991, Bjorn. And uh, I worked in Angola between 1996 and 2007, basically. I was involved in a number of feasibility series there on Kimberlite pipes. I was involved in operating alluvial diamond uh, operations. And uh, I've been doing, a since that time, consultancy for a number of companies in other parts of the world for diamond exploration. and. Uh, I'm doing that as we speak now for GEM as well. Now GEM has the Dala concession, I think it is called, and which is in a very uh, nice location because one of the biggest diamond mines of the world isn't, uh, is in close proximity. Um, also um, it has both the potential for kimberlite and for alluvial uh, diamond mining. Can you please tell us where the potential is, what you, what you th see in the project? Yeah, thanks Bjorn. Yes, that's uh, that's correct. Uh, the Dalla license, which is owned by Gem International, is located in northeastern Angola. A very large license, 3,000 square kilometers. It's immediately south of the town of Sarimo, which is the provincial capital, and a little bit further south of the Katoka Diamond Mine, which is the fourth largest diamond mine in the world. Primary deposit in a kimberlite pipe and produces about 80% of Angola's diamonds. There's recently been a new discovery about 20 kilometers from uh, the Katoka mine called Luasha, and that is purported now to be probably the largest kimberlite diamond discovery in the history of the world. The Russians who discovered it, who are a joint venture partner at Katoka with the uh, with the Angolans, <clears throat> have reported that this this mine, the initial exploration work, which has got over 50 drill holes now, has about 350 million carats of diamonds already indicated at a similar grade to Katoka, probably a little bit higher. Uh, they've drilled it down to 400 meters, so they're going to drill it deeper and the uh, geologist from the Russian diamond company Alrosa, who uh, gave a presentation here at the PDAC uh, two days ago, felt that uh, drilling it even deeper can bring the number of potential carrots up to well over 600 million, which is, which is really outstanding. This is a really major discovery. And Della, the Della license which GEM has is not too far from this new discovery, about five kilometers. And what that means is that this area in Angola, kimberlite pipes in this area have the potential to be very, very diamondiferous. And, and uh, on the Dalla license, uh, the past historical work by a, another operator between 2004 and 2008 <coughs> drilled 11 drill holes. They discovered six new kimberlite pipes confirmed, but they did very little evaluation of them. They only sent small samples for testing. And uh, the fact that there are kimberlites known now on the Dalla license and the fact that GEM and its partners in Angola have been able to secure the rights to kimberlite exploration at Dalla makes this a very, very uh, high potential, high priority uh, uh, project. And of course, we know there's alluvial production going on in Dalla by uh, illegal miners now, and uh, alluvial production can be restarted and have some meaningful cash flow for, uh, for GEM and its partners uh, very quickly. That's certainly a very good uh, start, that's to say okay, we use that alluvial production to finance our drilling activities. Now, as you said, there's six known targets on the Dala. No, six known pipes confirmed. Known pipes there's confirmed. about another 20 targets at least that have never been evaluated. Okay, so a lot of potential there, but you concentrate on the confirmed pipes. Um, what kind of drilling do you have to do to get well, a result? Well, uh, initially what we have to do, we'll try and recover the old drill core. 
uh, we'll try and test more of the drill core because uh, I didn't say this, but two and a half kilos was all that was tested, which is not a meaningful sample whatsoever in relation to testing kimberlites. A 50 kilo sample is the minimum size that anybody would ever do. They had issues, uh, the previous operator, shipping samples out of Angola, but uh, we can solve all those, of course, and uh, uh, we'll be sampling what's what's still available from the old pipes and probably drilling new holes on them to determine if those pipes are zoned and have other uh, phases inside the kimberlite that could contain uh, diamonds. So really, you know, they've proven there are kimberlites on the property. That's the key thing. There are many more targets that have never been drilled or tested. And uh, the fact that they just tested small samples is meaningless in terms really of the diamond potential of those existing pipes. And of course the other pipes. We know there's diamonds on the property being mined from the alluvials, so there has to be diamonds in kimberlite somewhere in that property. So there's certainly huge, huge potential. Um, now you close the financing, you're going to go in there, you're going to reevaluate uh, the existing data. Um, you're going to get that from uh, the previous owner. That's correct. Right. And that's, a, that's a very, very important part of this program because it allows us to go ahead much more quickly using that information and not having to redo it and reacquire it again by spending a lot of money. Uh, you know, there was over $14 million spent previously by the previous operator on this property. And all that data is good data. They had really competent people doing it. They just ran out of money in 2008 when the, when the world economic crisis hit us. So what's next then? What, what do you want to do this year? Where do you expect to be same time this year? Well, this time next year, I would expect we're going to have some modest alluvial production because uh, that can be started very quickly. And of course, we'll be in a position probably by this time next year because it's the beginning of the dry season, uh, hopefully to uh, have uh, done some initial evaluation on those kimberlites that have been found and hopefully begun some drilling on new targets and redrilling of those to get more samples. And uh, full evaluation of the data, there's a good potential there uh, for, for doing a, an airborne electrical survey as well as the magnetic survey that's already been done because the Russians have confirmed to me that the electrical surveys are much more accurate in determining the location of these kimberlites than the magnetics uh, due to the fact that the uh, kimberlites themselves are, uh, are less resistive than the surrounding rocks and uh, the magnetic field in this area, this is a technical comment, but is nearly horizontal because you're on the, what's called the magnetic equator so the field is flat so it doesn't necessarily give you results which are as easy to interpret as the uh, as the results at higher latitudes so now where do you see let's say you hit something um, you prove up uh, the pipe is diamondiferous uh, where would that take the company what would be the well you know this is a it's a it's a two or three year exercise to find a kimberlite take large samples determine the diamond content uh, ultimately take bigger samples, get a parcel of diamonds that can be evaluated, that can tell you what the value of the diamonds is in that kimberlite. And, and kimberlite exploration and development is basically successive larger and larger samples to get accurate information. So it would be a probably two to three years, but the identification of new pipes and the identification of positive information showing that these pipes can be diamondiferous and a successive series of uh, programs and of course releasing news is uh, very very possible and of course budgeting and having the funds to do all this is uh, is very important which is what uh, GEM is in the process of doing now but having the Kimberlite rights is extremely important because this is where the big uh, the big carrot is in terms of uh, opportunity of exploring this license. So Lee many thanks let me just say in diamond exploration, if the company of a, of a size like uh, Gem International hits its targets and proves up, I think we might be able to see a completely new valuation of the company. And um, if you look up in the historical uh, evaluation of companies before and after Big Find, you'll see that there's huge potential there. So have a look out for Gem International. We'll see how they do. Thank you. Thank you, Bjorn. <laughs>